The way we make things is changing, radically. A new set of ideas and trends have emerged and combined to create a new industrial revolution, one led by people and human innovation. They're using ideas like collaborative design teams and leaner, more customizable manufacturing. Once upon a time, a factory made one thing. Now, a factory can make almost as many things as there are people to imagine them. From Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. The 6.5 billion rand first phase of Africa's largest residential development to date, Stain City Lifestyle Resort, was launched last month. The 2,000 acre development is located north of Four Ways in Johannesburg. Anine Vermeulen was there. Phase 1 comprises 93 apartments and 19 cluster homes, with a further 45 cluster homes to be built off plan. In addition, six show homes have been completed and 220 freehold stands have been released onto the market, allowing owners to build their own homes. The one, two, and three bedroom apartments range in size from 74 square meters to 149 square meters and will cost from 1.65 million rand to 3.9 million rand. High demand for this type of residence has prompted the developers to build an additional 25 apartments over the coming 18 months. These will be sold off plan. Meanwhile, the cluster homes on offer at Stain City range in price from 6.2 million rand to 8.4 million rand and comprise mainly four bedroom options with an average floor size of 350 square meters on stands varying from 400 square meters to 600 square meters. When it comes to the architectural design of Stain City, we encourage diversity. There's not one um, given stylistic code that uh, designers have to adhere to. Uh, we believe that, as with all great cities, you know, the, the richness of the architectural the experience lies in the diversity of it. So you'll see from the structures that have been erected at Stain City, it varies from the very formal um, triumphal gatehouses to the earth shelter, now you see me, now you don't, architecture of the clubhouse, to this deconstructed apartment building behind us where varying roof heights and differing facade treatments break it up into a village feel. Also with the show houses and the homes in the first village, you'll see that there's a, a great variety and a great diversity in the different architectural styles, ranging from super contemporary to more traditional country barn style houses and even some more traditional um, chateau or manor house styles. Speaking at the official launch of the development, Stain City Properties CEO Giuseppe Pomari stated that there was no development on the continent that compared in size and infrastructure to Stain City. He added that residents would enjoy an unparalleled array of leisure activities and create a unique quality of life that has long been out of reach for most South Africans, owing to high walls, the need to commute and security concerns. The inspiration is the cities of old, uh, you know, community living, uh, pedestrianized human scale developments where people uh, have got the free of movement uh, where children can go for a walk with mom and dad where you can send your child to buy a pint of milk and or a loaf of bread without having to fear for their lives because of cars uh, so that's what inspired us as cities of old the developers have provided substantial financial support for government's master planning for the region, which had resulted in the fast tracking of regional infrastructure upgrades. The developers invested 300 million rand in the road upgrade along the R511 that now features three lanes in each direction from Uranium Street through to Erling Road, with plans to extend this through to the N14. Stain City is also partnering with government to extend William Nickel Drive through to the N14, which is already underway. The developers also financed a major sewer upgrade at a total cost of 73.9 million rand. This has included an upgraded bulk sewer pipeline from Danefern to a new pump station and the construction of a new 35 million rand water reservoir on the northeast portion of the resort that will store up to 30 megaliters of water and is part of Johannesburg Water's master planning for the region. The one thing that we realized to bring a development of this nature to fruition the bulk infrastructure services would have had to have been upgraded. William Nickel was totally congested, so the overall budget to upgrade William Nickel from the N14 uh, to, uh, you know, towards four ways is close to a billion rand. To date, 
We have spent 300 million and it's been a public-private partnership with Hartrans. Uh, so we contributed a third of those costs and we're going to be contributing a third of the overall costs. We're breaking ground soon on uh, Cedar Road uh, on the similar basis and we're going to be carrying on doing those public-private partnerships with government in order to upgrade the infrastructure in this area and that's really what's brought a huge amount of development. So the 12,000 jobs that we have created today is just the beginning. Other news making headlines this week, ESCOM targets 975 megawatts in savings as it restarts its DSM schemes. State-owned power utility ESCOM, which halted its demand-side management interventions last year owing to funding uncertainties, reports that some of the programs will be restarted this year and that a savings target of 975 megawatts has been set. In terms of the, once again back to the mathematics, uh, we have less funding than we originally had applied for through the MIPD3 process. But nevertheless, our intention is with that uh, lower funding still to meet our targets. And the mathematics again, of our demand side management program is as follows. We, we had stopped our program for the last year due to financial constraints in ESCOM, but through the war room, through the current uh, situation, we've restarted it. So we, we have 1.7 billion rand, which we'll be investing to achieve savings of 975 megawatts. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.